My name is Samad Tolukbay. I'm a journalist, researcher, and descendant of great nomads. My ancestors had wandered through these steppes for centuries, followed their herds in search of the best pastures. The cattle was always their main capital. What are they now? The descendants of the great cattle breeders. The school of nomads studying the past, creating present in order to build the future. In today's program, Ulatau is the cradle of Kazakh Kanate, ethno festival Kokmaisa, feast of the first spring Kumus. The fertile land of the white Sararka steppe, Ulatau. Geographically, this is the very center of Kazakhstan. In addition, these places from time immemorial witness the history of my people. After all, scientists call Ulatau the cradle of nomadic civilization. In fact, this region keeps all the stages of the formation of our ancestors since prehistoric times. Historical monuments can be found at every step. And it is no coincidence that today this beautiful land has become the site of the Kokmaisa Ethno Festival. A grandiose event synthesized the history of my people, its culture and art. Since ancient times, the Kazakhs after surviving the cold winter migrated to the spring pasture, a cocktail. People built up the yurts and began their life in a new place with celebrations. This holiday was called Kokmaisa. But I did not come to the festival at once. Traveling along Ulatau, I decided to visit Khan Ordase, which means Khan's Horde. Khan Orda, this is the place where the so-called inauguration of Kazakh Khans was held from the century to the century. For example, Abul Qayyar Khan became a Khan in Karatau, but an official event was held here. Or Ablai became a Khan in Kokshitau, but he arrived here on the inauguration. It is here that for several centuries, the largest summer base of Kazakh Khans was located. In the high walls surrounded by a deep moat of the fortress, there was a Khan's tent. The entrance to the fortification was only on one side, and at the corners, tower guards raised. Here, Abulai Khan gathered all three Kazakh Jews against the Jungar invaders. Everything is fine here. Mountains, greenery and transparent waterfalls. So I have arrived. There are about 50 of Kazakh yurts in a picturesque gorge. The holiday is in full swing. I'm attracted by a variety of charming scents and flowers. While some people split firewood, others are busy by preparing national dishes. Young people are swinging al tabakan, and on the stage musicians set the tone for all this wonderful action. We want to show the diversity of Kazakh culture and thus contribute to the development of tourism in Ulatau. We have already conducted similar festivals. This time the festival is named Kokmaisa because we have such events just in the spring. 
In the ancient times, our ancestors at this time of year spent a large one under the name of Kokmaisa. And we would like to hold this ethno festival here every year, so that guests from all over Kazakhstan and from abroad always identify this holiday with Ulutau land. Kazakhs celebrated such a holiday since ancient times. Nomads also called this holiday Kumis Morinduk. This is the time of the first spring Kumis. Even residents of neighboring villages were invited to the celebration. The owner of the house where the Kumis Morinduk was arranged received the blessing of the elders. At the festival, this ritual is preserved. Mares are milked here and people first treat guests with spring Kumis. When the spring comes, the mares are kept on the leash. The nomads milk them, and from milk, famous kumis was made. Anar, so I'll give you the best of compliments on your first milk yield. Please tell us about how the rite is conducted. In the spring, we separate the mares from the foals and tie them with a special lasso. We cover it with oil, with the wishes to have a lot of milk this year. This is the custom. The first thing to do is to pull a lasso six to eight meters long into special pegs. It is called jelle. The foals and mares are tied to such an arcan in order to separate them from the main jam. After the archon and steaks are smeared with oil and good wishes should be said. With the same intentions, the mane of the stallion and the udder of the mare are smeared with oil. According to beliefs, it is forbidden to step over the jelly or to step on it. It was believed that such an action would bring failure to the cattleman. Anar, can I try to milk the mare? You will hardly cope with it, because our mares prefer women's hands. Oh, will they be scared of me? Yes, and they can even kick you. Then what should I do? Hold the foal. But we'll feed him first, right? Right, and only after that we can start milking. Deal. Anar will milk mares, and I'll look after the foals. It seems that I'm afraid of not only mare, but also falls. The challenge is to untie them and bring them to the mare. Thus the mares are milked every one and a half hours. They're on the leash from morning until evening. Typically milking continues until late autumn. The mare on the leash must be healthy and the main thing, it should be milked mare. Special attention should be given to the place where milking mares will be kept, so it cannot be pulled on the ground with scanty vegetation. Milk mares should be kept near the pond where there is more juicy grass. So we have milked our mares. We got about 5 liters of milk. Yes, about five. Now you can drink it once or you'll make kumis out of it. It is optional. You can drink milk and you can make kumis out of it. Will you pour it into special dishes? Yes, and I'll whip. The longer the better. So we saw the process of milking. Now we'll get kumis. What should we do? Yeah, that's right. Then let's go and see how the kumis is made. Appa, hello. Hello, son. I brought milk. What to do with it? Now you need to pour it into this dish. It is called kuba. Next, we will whip for a long time. Will I pour? Let's do. You need to filter the milk. Of course. Uh 
Shall we whip now? Yes. Before pouring milk here, we smoke kobe with feather fern. If you do not do this, then kumis won't be tasty. Of course, the longer you shake, the more delicious the drink will turn out. Here's the secret, my son. If you follow all the rules, then you will get the most delicious kumis. And you can't get the kumis immediately after milking. Well, let me help you. And you will tell me about this wonderful drink. Firstly, I want to congratulate everyone on this wonderful holiday. We're holding today Kumas Murnduk. We treat Kumas and Saumal to all guests. Let such holidays do not end. And let our Kumas Murnduk be graceful. According to grandmother, Kumis was prepared right in the saddle. The nomads filled the leather wine skins with milk, and while they wandered from place to place, the milk was whipped in a natural way, and the most delicious kumis was turned out. Having tried this drink once, the nomads appreciated its taste and felt an unprecedented surge of energy. Over time, our ancestors invented kube for whipping. Herodotus said that the nomads liked to drink a special drink, which they prepared by beating mare's milk in special deep tubs. It turns out, this recipe of kumis is about 25 centuries old. You said that before milk is poured into kuba, you should smoke dishes. How do you do it? Usually, they smoke with feather fern. We set fire to its branches and then cover the smoke with dishes. Only then you can pour the milk. It's time to try the kumas, which I whipped for so long. Yes. Really very tasty. This drink not only quenches thirst, but also gives sensation of satiety. Thus kumis saves a person from thirst and hunger at the same time. If you drink this in a week, you can feel an amazing burst of energy. So after getting drunk kumis, I went on to walk around the festival. On the Etna festival, you can buy various national souvenirs and books dedicated to Ulatau. And this is Sasternai, one of the most ancient musical instruments. It has the size of a goose egg. Initially, it had only two holes. Now the tool has five to six holes. The principle of the game is to alternately click on the holes and simultaneously blow into one of them. The sound is very deep and melodic. Its sound and timbre depend primarily on the strength of the blown air. Gathered people spend their time wonderfully. Some perform on stage, while others enjoy horseback riding around the surroundings. Everywhere some of ours are boiling. Tables are laid. Everywhere people meet guests. I saw a huge swing in Altabakan and decided to go for spin. I've heard a lot about it, but I myself sit for the first time. Great, just breathtaking. Since ancient times, Altabakan has been a youth entertainment. By the end of the Jailau, guys and girls were going on a swing. They sang and had fun.
It seems that they compete in everything, even in drinking kumus. The conditions are simple. Who drinks more and faster, he won. Seeing the noisy crowd, I decided to see what was happening here. I was passing and saw women are wrestling here. Yes, you did not misunderstand. This is a women's wrestle. Participants are residents of the local Awuls. Each of them has a serious support group consisting of fellow villagers. Today, the form of the wrestling, Kazakhshak Kress, is rather developed in the country. There are well-known wrestlers. This is very interesting. But it's even more interesting to see the old kind of competition, Katyn Kress, that is, women's wrestling. Here, participants start absolutely unprepared. They're usually villagers. But there are two interesting moments here. I believe that the victory can be considered already that the lady gets courage and fight in front of so many people and the second thing is how the villagers support her this is a very interesting kind of competition lots of foreign tourists came to the festival for them exhibitions were organized directly under the open sky that tell about the culture history and way of life of the nomadic people for example a real ancient smithy was reconstructed here Metal processing is one of the most important crafts that the ancient nomads were engaged in. Since the Bronze Age, in the Sarraka steppes, and especially in the Yolotau region, ancient metallurgy began to develop. In the beginning of the 20th century, the mineral resources of this region were studied in detail by the founder of Kazakhstan geology, Kanishi Mantaevich Satpaev. He proved that in the Bronze Age, on the Eurasian continent, it was just Kazgan and Ulatau that were a center of development and prosperity of the ancient metallurgy. The name Jeskazgan in free translation means copper mine or the place where copper was dug. At the beginning of the second millennium, copper mining and metallurgy aroused and developed in the vast steppes of central Kazakhstan. A fairly early acquaintance of men with the first metal of antiquity was promoted by the abundance of exits in Sararka of oxidized ores and features of native copper. For the festival Kokmaisa, we brought an installation from the Makian Tori Gelding Museum, which is located in the village of Jezde, which also means copper. Here we exhibited metal products, which were used by local residents two more decades ago. The working tools of Ulatau blacksmiths and jewelers are also presented. We clearly decided to show what the traditional Ulatau craftsmen were doing in their smithies. I would call the Makantor Gelding Museum unique. After all, in a small village, historians and archaeologists collected artifacts, real objects, that clearly show the chronology of the ancient and modern history of the copper industry. The pride of the museum is the ongoing reconstruction of the damp and crucible furnaces of the central Kazakhs, which operated in the second and first millennium BC. More precisely, it's not even a furnace, but a whole prehistoric full cycle plant, starting with ore dressing, loading the furnace, and finishing with smelting and further casting of metal. And even though I could not work as a blacksmith, I was very glad that the exposition of this museum came to the festival.
coming out of the smithy, I saw that the people gathered in the center of the field. It turns out that the next contest began, this time outdoor Spock. This is also wrestling, but on horseback. As a rule, trained athletes participate in the fight, who are well kept on horseback. For beginners, of course, this is a complex game. However, it is on such mass festivals that the most ordinary guys play in the outdoor spot. Here are the main things to grab the enemy successfully and pull off the horse. Who could not resist the saddle? He lost. In this game, the horses of the participants play an important role. They say that the outcome of the bout is 50% dependent on the rider. Their prohibited methods, for example, do not be rude to the opposite side, don't twist arms, beat his horse. So the qualifying matches have passed, and now the finalists seem to be determined. According to the rules, the wrestler should not clutch at the opponent's saddle. This rule was violated by one of the participants in red. At the end of competition, I also decided to test myself and join the fight. Yes, and not with a simple participant. There's the champion of the Outdoor Spock Festival of Kok Maisa. Gary K, congratulations. Thank you. Do you play this game for the first time? Even so, you're the champion. Well done. Do you play in the Kok Par? I'm more involved in the Baiga. And today I've come to Ulutau with a winner. Are you fond of wrestling? Yes, I am keen on wrestling. I guess by body built. Tell me about the basics of the rules in outdoor spot, like fighting. Do not hold the opponent's saddle or the mane of his horse. If your foot flies out of the stirrup, it is considered a loss. And you have to pull it like this. We are now grabbing both the chest and the head. And in general, in the past, the enemy fell from the horse just grabbing his hand. Now, of course, the rules are simpler. The main thing is strength and dexterity. Well, let's get started. I'll try to enter into fight with the champion of today's game. Yes, it is very difficult to win without weight classes. No matter how much I try, but the opponent is heavier than me, which means it's easier for him to pull me from the horse. But I'm glad that I experienced this match. The celebrations are going on. I will sum up the results of this busy day. Today I saw all the greatness of Ulutau and the hospitality of the Ulutau inhabitants. This festival reflected the diversity of Kazakh culture. After all, here singers, koishi, historians, and artisans are gathered. Great Ulatau, which united the three Jews, is still the place of unification of my people. Once here from the whole steppe, the Batar is gathered to unite against the invaders and defend our land. We are happy generation. I wish that we will always live in peace. 